Hey, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna title this video, How I Failed at Corn. So we got a little bit of ahead of ourselves, or I guess I got a little bit ahead of myself. I had, we had some really nice weather uh, in early, uh, early April, and we planted this corn. Then it rained and rained and rained, and then the corn barely started popping through, and we had a very late frost, and it nipped it pretty good. It seems like wherever the corn was higher, uh, it was not as wet, but the further we go down, the less that the corn produced. I will say the planter is planting perfectly spaced corn. That's a cool thing to see, and you can see where it did germinate, that it, it, it's spaced pretty much perfectly. However, we've dug into places that uh, did not germinate, and the seeds are there. Uh, they're just, they just rot it. So guess what? We're gonna replant all of our corn again, and we're gonna replant beans. But we show you guys the good and the bad on our channel. So let's get to work, less talking, more planting. Front and center, come on buddy. Yeah, this one here, it just, this field over here, there's some corn sporadically, but this stayed soaking wet the whole time. I mean, there might be like 25 stalks in all of this right here. So this is the lower field, if you will, the lower, the lower garden. I see maybe 10 or 15 stalks of corn coming up. This portion here stayed extremely wet for way longer than I was expecting. We had a wet, wet spring. And you can see where the seeds were dropped correctly. But again, they, they just rot it because it was just, uh, the, the ground stayed too cool for too long. And then we had a, anything that did come up right as it was coming through the ground, it, it got nipped with a pretty hard frost, late frost. So I almost hate to retail this up because there is a pretty decent stand of corn, but we're still so early in the season that we have plenty of time. If we plant today, we've got a lot of rain coming in next week, but it's gonna be a lot warmer. It's gonna be those 80s and 70s and 80 degree days, and that's gonna get the, the ground warm and it's gonna germinate really fast. So we probably will see corn popping up again in probably eight to 10 days with that kind of temperature. So another reason we're going to retail this area is because I tried to spray it with nitrogen uh, prior to the ground being dry enough. And you can see where I really marred it up right here, this big, big footy prints in the, in the soil. So we're going to do a shallow till and level this all out. I think it'll make a lot nicer garden. We also have the hydraulic top link on today, so that's going to allow us to adjust the tiller front to back um, without getting off the tractor. The ground is really ready for it. Right now is I, I just want to point this that I am I am tilling very fast fairly shallow and in two-wheel drive just seems to be doing a really good job no load on the tractor at all Against my better judgment, instead of using the grapple just to pick this little stuff up, I believe I'm going to throw it away by hand. That's really against my moral code, but it's not that much. I don't really got to get the big stuff anyway. The tiller would chop up all the little stuff.
we're going to take the like make two passes right here in the lower part of this uh, little pasture and this is going to be where we put uh, our beans we've been storing logs here but as we moved our log yard to the back this is going to be a really great place to put beans we're only going to put Again, I'm gonna to go to till tooth pass because Tanya has beans at her location as well. Uh, and we're gonna have a lot of beans, a lot of corn. We're, more, we're probably doing more about bulk here than she's got a, a really large variety at, in her garden. So another thing we're gonna do is because this is a fresh till, we're gonna tilt it forward, make the tiller cut deeper. Okay, that does it for tilling. We'll get the planter out and get it set up. So this is some of the incredible seed that I got. That's what the name brand is called, incredible. And I got quite a bit of it. And at the end of the year, if you if you have leftover, you can put it in one of these vacuum pack bags and vacuum it down, throw it in your freezer. And word on the street is it'll last another year. So we'll see. But this is this year's corn, so pretty high hope for this. A lot of it's germinated already anyway, so I feel pretty good about it. Whatever I don't use, I can put back in this bag and seal back. So I've already got my little spacer set for the corn. We know that works good. I'm gonna keep my hoppers about the same. I know we've already tested these, but on the last go around they dropped corn really good, but we're gonna do it again. One, two, Three, four, yeah, that one's going fine. So we had a viewer uh, that pointed out that if we would go from the center of the tractor to the center of the tire that our rows, we get more rows and they would be easier to plow. And the reason I went from center of the tractor to the outside of the tire, because first off, I don't do this a lot. And the outside of the tire for the industrial tires are a lot wider. And somehow in mind, I thought it would be better if the rows were wider apart. Well, the reality of it is it really didn't do anything but waste a lot of space. So the viewer that said that, you're right, and I apologize that I don't have your name here. But we went ahead and measured from the center of the tractor to the center of the tire and we rechanged the planter distance to 22 inches apart. And then each time I go down, I will place the outside of the tire in the last tire track. So it should just stagger down. I think he's right. We'll find out here in just a minute. Me and Gizmo, we are not too big of men to admit when we're wrong, even if it's bitter and it tastes really bad. Eat crow, it's good for you. Isn't that right? I think Gizmo's disappointed in me.
that's the actual one in the back. Well, I ain't got no vacuum. So you see right here where there's some, don't eat the bean. I hung a clump of grass and it pulled the grass along. That's why I backed up and it did a really good job with the beans. I don't see any, yeah, it did a great job. I don't see any beans left right over here. Again, hung a little bit of grass. There's a couple of beans right there that didn't get covered up. If we don't get those covered up, they obviously won't. They won't germinate, and therefore, I can't stay round. <laughs> now, this was the very first time being tilled. Next year, I'm going to go ahead and sterilize the ground in the, in the end of the at the end of the year. But the beans are absolutely dropping good. You can see right here where it come out of the end, and the beans are about well, about four inches apart. Supposed to get rain today, or excuse me, tomorrow. We're supposed to get a nice rain. Uh, I believe that's going to be perfect timing, and it's going to stay really warm. There we go. There's a couple. Like I said, this is the first time this has ever been tilled. It's going to be probably terrible weeding, keeping the grass out this year. But you know, I got Tanya to do all that. She's back there behind the camera, shaking her head. Listen guys, I really appreciate you watching our channel and I really wish you would subscribe to our channel. It, it means a lot to us. We're trying to grow. If you like this kind of content, hit the thumbs up and please leave us a comment. We really love to, to read your comments. We've got, uh, we're starting to get a pretty good community and they're really helpful. Matter of fact, some of the lessons I took into account today were lessons that I learned from uh, listening to some comments on, online. So I really appreciate that. Please hit that subscribe button. God bless and have a wonderful day.